This video is going to be over removing the exhaust from an XK8. This is a convertible model, so there are a few differences from the coupe model, particularly in some support braces that are underneath the front and rear sections of the car. The convertible will have them, where the coupe will not have those. I will mention those in the video as we go through. So the XK8 has a dual exhaust that has not one, not two, but five silencers on it. So as you can see back here, this is the final silencer and exhaust tip on the left side. And you have the final silencer and tip for the right side. Both of these lead up through their individual pipes up to a, another silencer. There's one for the right. There's one for the left. And then they go into a single large silencer right in the middle before once again it splits off into two and goes to each of the catalytic converters. First things first we're going to start at the back and just start taking it down little by little. The rear silencers are held on by a rubber grommet you can see right there. It's the same on both sides. It's just on the outside. That's just a simple push it off if the rubber's hard and not uh, easy manipulated, you may have to use a pair of pliers to kind of squeeze and pop it off there. The second point is right here. You can see somebody's even gone as far to mark lineup marks, which is not a bad idea because when you take this off, getting the exhaust tips lined up back in the center of the hump right here is a little tougher if you don't have all that stuff marked out and, and lined up. Not something I'm personally worried about because I'm gonna be a long time of ever getting this back in place and many things are gonna change. As you can see here on the right side, they weren't as good about getting it lined up in the center as they were on the left. So here's the right side. And these are done this way because as you can see there, the exhaust goes up and over the drive. There's your axle going from your wheel over to your differential and that exhaust goes right over the top of it and does the same thing on the left. There's your wheel hub over to the differential and there it is. So they break this exhaust into many pieces because of that. Here's from the offset side. This is on the left side of the car. You can kind of see a little bit of the hanger here up in there by the spring. So that's a hanger you'll have to take loose when you're doing the second portion after you've got the rear silencer off. That's when you're getting to the second silencer. It's going to break loose right behind the center single silencer. Of course, once again, it does the exact same thing on both sides. It has a mount back off up in there. And that mount is mounted up on there with, I believe, some 10 millimeter uh, headed nuts. You can take loose the whole thing or you can try to pop it out. Uh, once again, it's passed through a rubber eyelet to help keep down any vibration. And then here's the cross brace for the exhaust right around the transmission. Not a necessity to take it loose unless you're trying to do something else and not remove the exhaust then yeah you may have to take it loose for another project but for this one no reason to touch that because we're going to take it loose here on each side right where it joins up to the catalytic converter and these are all just clamp fits as you notice some of this stuff's pretty rusty so we may have to get some penetrating oil after it, it gives me a little trouble I'll hit it with a little penetrating oil give it a few minutes to maybe even a few hours to kind of break down and give it a try again. Worst case scenario, it is exhaust and there's quite a bit of a rust so there are chances for bolts to break and unfortunately that's just more cost and things that you have to hunt down. So we're going to start on the right side here. This nut is a 15 millimeter size. Let's see if we can get an extension on here. Nice and free moving so far. You don't have to take these completely off, just back them off a good ways so that the clamp will release. So I'm going to do the opposite side the same way. Now onto our rubber boot. As you can see right there, a lot of times all you need is a something to pry with. 
and there you go. She's loose. So I'm going to have to kind of jiggle it and work it around until it comes loose from our clamp, but I'm going to do the other side the same way. So I said, you're going to kind of work it. Careful to watch your eyes, wear some goggles here. You can get debris and stuff falling on you. There we are, we're out. Of course, a little easier on a, a two-point lift, but it's doable on a four-post lift. I do want to point out these devices right here. They're on the front side of the spare tire wheel well. It's this large box under here. This is not your fuel tank. This is actually your spare tire well. So they're right in front of it. What these do is they clean up the emissions. These are the charcoal boxes that help capture emissions from the fuel tank and the fuel lines heading up to the engine and then push back here to help clean it up so it doesn't just go out in the air. These cars do have that and the exhaust runs right beside it. So be real careful when you put your exhaust back in not to have your exhaust touching it because you're going to get a little rattle. Most likely won't cause any damage unless you just leave it on there long term and the vibration eventually will mess it up. We're on to our next pipes. So we're going to bust these two loose. That way we can pull down that second silencer for each of these. The toughest part here is getting back up into that area that's part of the rear subframe. Those can be a little bit of a bugger. We'll try to get some camera footage up in there once we get some of this stuff out of the way, make it a little easier to see what I'm talking about. Once again, 15 millimeter fits this. This is another point that you would want to mark before you start breaking anything loose if you're trying to get it exactly back in the way it was. As you can see there, we're already nice and loose. This is the part that usually causes a lot of headache because getting these out is a little easier than getting them in. So we're going to go up to the front here and bust these loose. So this clamp here, we're going to go ahead and break it loose on both sides. So far so good on the rust. Don't want to get too excited because that's usually about the time something does break. Breaking loose this opposite side here. So technically at this point, the secondary silencers are loose as well as the center silencer is loose. I can actually jiggle it quite a bit now. So that comes into a very handy situation here in a moment when we go to take this stuff loose. And having the ability to move this up and down just a little bit can uh, make it easier to get these out. So hopefully you can see that right there, right to the left of the exhaust pipe. You can see a little pin kind of sticking out. That is actually the grommet holding this second sil uh, silencer in place. So as you can see, it's sticking out over an inch. So you got a bit of travel there to push this thing back. There's no actual mushroom on the, the pin like there was on the muffler in the very back because once you have this in place, really there's, it's not going to slide forward. Everything else is going to hold it in. It's more of just a vibration dampener and keeping it up off of the subframe here. Once again, if it binds up too much, you can always use a little penetrating oil or some dry type silicone lube. Nothing that's gonna damage rubber though, because that is rubber. There it is. We're loose here at the main middle silencer. Now I just gotta jiggle it until I can get that pin out. I'm actually hitting a cross brace in the back. Pin is not quite out, but I am hitting. So you can see there, the pin is not quite out of that rubber grommet, but we're hitting this pipe right here that you see is open. That's the other end of it. It's hitting against that cross brace for the rear subframe. So you can either take that loose or you can jiggle it around until you get it right. But I think I'm just going to go with the process of unbolting, which like I said, I believe it's a 10 millimeter. Get that up in there and actually take that rubber grommet loose so it comes down with the exhaust. So what I was able to do is to move this 
silencer completely off the big silencer and get its pipe actually above the other one. Oop. And that enabled me to slide this up higher so that this rear pipe was not hitting that brace anymore. It actually gave me a little bit more gap, which gave me the little bit extra movement I needed to get that pin out of that grommet. So at this time, all I've got to do is finagle this tube up and around. Kind of have to rotate, but you can get it out of this pipe. Hopefully my lift isn't the reason I can't get it out. The lift is a bit in the way, but fortunately it finally did wiggle out. Now I just have to do the same thing over here. Wiggle this loose from the main silencer. There we go. Once again, the lift kind of our crutch and getting this out. Now we've got the bend of the exhaust back here catching on the spring. And with the lift in the way. So at this point, we're having trouble getting the exhaust out because of the lift. So a two post lift is definitely going to be advisable if you have the option. But this pipe here keeps catching on the spring and I can't get enough downward motion because of the lift. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that out. Uh, possibly have to move the car around. So from here we're going to go to removing the main exhaust silencer, the big one in the center. We already have the bolts undone so should be a matter of just Grabbing it and wiggling and prying, and it should come loose. Slowly but surely. If you get it loose enough, it should eventually come out just like that. And there you are, that's the main part of the exhaust out. Now I just gotta focus on the catalytic converters. So the way I managed to get it out, fortunately I do have these little jacks here. This is after I've gotten it out. It took quite a bit of wiggling. And I had to finagle it around my jack. That's as high as my jack would let me go. As you can see, I had to really spin it around and kind of work it around. But inevitably, once I got it to this point here, I had to slide it out. And unfortunately, because this finger is kind of in my way, to kind of go up and around it and swivel it around. As you can see, Got a nice, lovely kind of C shape here. That's what makes it such a bear to get in and out. Because you have to go around and up over the drive line and the rear subframe. I'm gonna break these loose. A 13 millimeter socket is what fits these. Hopefully we don't have too much rust and we can get these off. As always, try to find some sort of method that helps you keep track of your bolts and nuts and where they go. Oh, that's lovely. That one wasn't even tight. Use a shallow socket instead of a deep on this one. Once again, not very tight. So apparently somebody's worked on this and didn't care what they were doing. Not quite finger tight, but sure didn't take much of a turn of the wrench to break it loose. Especially being a transmission mount bolt. It's not important, not really. In case you didn't catch my sarcasm, that was sarcasm. That is very important to have your bolts tight holding your transmission to your engine. That way it doesn't have massive problems. Oh, they actually tighten that one somewhat. Anything to this one. Once again, a little bit. Not exactly what I would expect for torque specs on a transmission. I expected uh, much more resistance on that. 
And once you get these out, you get these plates out, that uh, should enable you to go to the top side. Of course, once I get the O2s out, I can start breaking loose up top. Now where I expect the most problems to come from is the top side. That's where you typically see a lot more rust. The manifolds fortunately don't have to come off this engine to get it out. So I'm going to leave them on until I get out of the car. Uh, that will make it much easier to get proper leverage on them and hopefully not have too many of those break. But I am expecting at least one or two of those to break. As for the three that hold the catalytic converter to the manifold on each side, I'm crossing my fingers, but I've already done this job once on my red coupe. Sure enough, I had two out of the six total bolts. They did break, so I had to order brand new ones. And so far, I've not been able to find those aftermarket. They have only been from Jag themselves, and for just a little bolt, they are rather pricey. So when it comes to the catalytic converters, you've got a mounting point, which you can barely see from here, where the manifolds hook to the cats. It's three bolts. You have to actually do that from the top side. But you can see the two O2 sensors here. Now there's two ways of doing this. You either take the O2 sensors out before you lower the cat, which is a safer way to do it, or you leave them on there and just pull them out with the cat, which is a little more risky. You know, you drop it or you catch it on things and you start prying, you can damage those O2 sensors and they are not particularly cheap. Usually looking at somewhere around $100 to $200 to replace those. So keep that in mind when you're working with these. You also want to make sure if you do take them off, label where they went. Uh, preferably put them right back where they were, at least in the pre or post cap position. If you're not putting them back in the left and right bank, that's not exactly super important that you put them left to right, but these are used. I'm going to prefer to put them right back where they were. Same thing here on the right side of the car. You got O2 sensors and you got to get that loose. Now down below where you can get to right now while the car is up in the air, you go ahead and break loose these two brackets that hold the uh, catalytic converter in place with the transmission. So once you get those loose, the catalytic converter is not going to fall out, but it is going to be loose. So if you take loose the top bolts, you are going to have to uh, be concerned about whether or not the, the cat just falls to the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and get these broke loose. And me personally, I'm going to pull the O2 sensors before I drop the catalytic converters. That way I don't have to worry about damaging them. Here we are at the O2 sensor. You're going to need a special tool, just like this one here. So this is a 22 millimeter O2 wrench, is what it's referred to a lot of times. It hooks on with a socket if you wish. Sometimes I've been able to use uh, just a rod or something and tap it from the side if I can't quite get a wrench in there. So let's see if we can get these O2 sensors off. They have this slit in them so they can get over the cable. And then there we are. This one fits on nicely. So I just need to get a sock or a ratchet on that. Typically, once you get them loose with the wrench, you should be able to rotate them around by hand. One of the things you can come across is the cable wants to start twisting up on itself. If it doesn't have a, a whole lot of slack or just uh, not much room to get to it, so unfortunately, these connect at the top. They're behind the throttle body or the intake on the very back side of the engine. So for this one, we are gonna have to uh, undo that because it does seem to get, be getting kind of tight on me. So if I can, I can go ahead and break loose these two lower ones. Now, the one up high, I'm not sure how I'm gonna get to that one quite yet. It is gonna be easier to get to once this lower O2 is out and that should hopefully help us get that done. So here we are, got it out. I was able to actually rotate it. It doesn't have many threads on here. You can see if I can get a little closer. There's not many threads on these, so it only takes about two or three turns and they're off. So this probe area here, the parts with the holes in it, kind of right there by my thumb, those there you wanna keep them clean. Don't let grit, grime, and stuff get in there. It can cause issues later on. It's actually got a heating element on this, and if that gets messed up, then of course the O2 sensor is no longer any good. So up on the top side, what we're running into is 
way down off in there in that little bitty dark area right here is where the manifold upper bolts are. So looking straight down, you can see what's in our way there. So we're going to have to actually do some things here to get that out, uh, such as we're going to have to remove the air intake for the opposite side because you can see where that tube is going right over on that back side of the engine. So we'll have to actually get that intake out of the way. And of course, the coolant reservoir on this side. And to pull the coolant reservoir, you're going to have to drain a bunch of the coolant, if not all the coolant. Because we're pulling the engine, I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant and go ahead and get the oil drained as well, because I've yet to do those two things. Hopefully you can kind of see down there pretty good. That is the catalytic converter, and there's the upper O2 sensor, which is much easier to get to from this top side. You can see it right down off in there. So I'm going to try to get those out from this top side using a wrench and the, of course, special socket. Then you also have these connectors here. These are the ones you're looking for. So you should have two on either side of the intake. So two here and then two back over in this area. Once you find those, those are the ones you want to undo. As you can see, that's the one that goes down to this O2 sensor. And if I undo this one, this is the O2 sensor down at the bottom. See so if I pull up, I should be able to get this one to fish out from down in there. And there we go. That's the lower O2, or the post O2. These here are intended to be clipped in right here on this point. Those should clip onto a retainer back here. Unfortunately, it looks like whoever was working in here before did not take the time to do that, so I will try to get all that squared away before I go back in with it. And we'll get this loose, and as rusty as that looks, I'm going to hit these nuts and bolts with some penetrating oil. I'm going to let them set for the next uh, evening. It's getting kind of late in the afternoon. So that'll give those time to kind of soak in and hopefully break that up. Hopefully I can see the bolts in here a little better. There are four. I believe I once before mentioned there was three, but it is actually four. On this side, you kind of have to move this back. And I don't know if you can see. It doesn't look like we can see them down there real good, but... There is another bolt down in between the valve cover and this shielding and pipe. And then there's one final one right down in there. So they are a little booger to get to. You are able to get down to them with a swivel. And you are going to have to use a deep socket because of the studs that are coming off the converter. Now in this process, I may even have to put the bracket back on down low to help hold it. But I'm going to attempt this by loosening up all these but one of them and we'll get one of them just mostly loose but the others will get completely off so you can see the o2 sensor still on there these were on so tight and i had so little room to get in there i was unable to get it loose and i could probably do some other things with the the wrench and i would if i wasn't trying to get the catalytic converter out if i was just changing the o2 i would go through those processes like i've shown on o2 sensors before you just use a punch rod and catch the side of the socket and tap it with a hammer to, to pop it loose. But in this instance, I'm taking the whole thing out. It's in a good enough position. I feel safe enough. Um, of course, play this by how you feel. If you don't feel safe, you feel you need to get that O2 sensor out, get it out. So as before mentioned, you're going to want some swivel action, whether it's through your uh, extension or a specialized swivel socket something like that to give you a little movement. I can probably get all these but one with this setup here, just a 13 millimeter deep uh, with the end here having the wobble on it. So that'll give me a little bit of uh, movement that I think I'll need. These will tend to be pretty tight, so you're gonna want a fairly long handled wrench. Do be careful while you're trying to break these loose. Don't press against a bunch of stuff over here. There are hoses and wiring that's in sheeting. Of course, with this being an older car that's been in some heat, um, it's definitely gonna have some crunchiness to the plastic. Uh, also, same thing, don't be prying against your valve cover. 
you'll wind up cracking it. Try to keep your your uh, extension here from pushing on things and of course the ratchet head as well. It's part of the reason you see me support it with my hand to try to keep it from prying on anything that shouldn't pry against. This back one here that's real close to the engine as before mentioned I don't think I can get with this. Sure enough I cannot. I'm going to have to have a little more of a swivel. So I'm going to start by getting my hand down in here with the socket, popping it on, that's why it's not on the wrench anymore. So I'm leaving it in place, I'm going to have to see about getting me a little extra swivel to get down into that position. So I'm just doing a swivel tip extension with a little one inch swivel tip on it, to see if that will give me what I need. Look is on my side. Uh, all four are now loose. Just got to continue to spin them out. I'm not a big fan of how much tension this is causing against the valve cover, but it is working. I just have to be careful not to put too much tension on it. course check so often to make sure you can still get your tool off that you're not backing it into the back of the head. One down, three to go. And always make sure you put your nuts out of the way so they don't get knocked somewhere. Right here, probably not the greatest place where I put it the first time. Back over here, unless your drain filter is knocked out, that big a nut won't fall anywhere. So nice little cubby hole here. That or keep you a dish nearby. Make this a little easier in the back. I'm going to add an extra extension on here. Now that they've been broke loose, I'll go ahead and spin them out. You can do this to break them loose, but just remember every inch of extension you add is going to give that much more springiness. So when you're trying to break it loose, it's a lot easier to break it loose on a shorter extension. Careful not to lose that nut. There we go. That was the lower nut closest to the fender. It is quite narrow. I kind of had to reach in there like this, kind of catch the exhaust manifold between these two fingers to get my finger in there to reach to it. Of course, if you got a magnet readily, go ahead and use that. I'm going to the two easiest. closest to the fender and the top one closest to the engine and I can see that the converter is already extremely loose and I'm down to just a couple of threads so I'm not going to take it loose any further because if I loosen that all the way I can see as loose as it is it's just going to fall to the ground so I think I can reach up in here once I get lifted up and just uh, use my fingers to finish loosening that nut and then drop it out to the bottom. The opening here is definitely nowhere near big enough to fit that converter out through the top. So here's a little better top view from this side. You can see those top two nuts are easy to get to. Of course these lower two, just like the other side, they're going to be a little bit more of a bear to get down to. This one here, the one closest to the engine, is not quite as bad. There's not quite as much stuff here. There's no pipe in the way of it. That one down there. So we're going to get to knocking those loose. One of those more nervous moments. That was on there extremely tight. Worried that the lug may have broke. But fortunately it, it didn't. It broke loose and uh, move on to the next one. Once again, the angle on this uh, bolt that's on the lower, close to the head side is at such an angle, you are going to need extra swivel. Whew. That one's 
one's on there tight too. Just my luck. I'm not liking the way that one feels. I'm gonna go with a different angle here maybe. Maybe I'll get lucky enough to get down here with just the ratchet. It's got a little more room on this side. Well, not really working out to my benefit there. To break loose the nut, that's closest to the head and the transmission down low, I had to use a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 13 millimeter deep. And I was able to brace against this bar here, used a rag to kind of keep from damaging the paint. And I was able to get on there just like this. So with that on the, on the nut, this here kind of wedged against this little notch to help keep it from shifting around. So it'll do that and then pry it against this bar and it broke loose. Fortunately, uh, no bolts broke. All the nuts came off. We've just got the inner upper nut on both sides in place, ready to drop those down. We're gonna lift it up here shortly and do that. Unfortunately, if you're on a coupe, you don't have this bar. This is a convertible only piece. You will have to figure out another way to, to get around that issue. Uh, one of the methods I can think of is if you've got a, a thinner pry bar maybe, that you could get in down on the actual manifold uh, bracing and use that as your wedge to kind of catch on the ratchet and then catch down here low on, the, on that and then pry like this. I can see doing something like that if, you, if you're having trouble getting those broke loose. At this point, we're ready to lift it up, get those pulled out, get these cats out of the way. So I did have to go ahead and put the brackets back on. I just put one bolt in each place, and now I'm fixing to lower back down and take those upper bolts off, and then I can take it all down with this bracket. Back down, just got to take loose these nuts. Okay, there's the last one on that side. There's the last one on that side. Now it's time to go back up. So I mentioned before, drop these down. This is the pigtail to the uh, pre-cat O2. So you want them down out of the way and easy to get to so you can help guide them out when you take the cat out at the same time. Not my preferred method, but they were on there really tight and I was coming out with the cat anyhow, so might as well just go ahead and do it that way. Race this up. I just put these in finger tight, so just gotta hold the cap. Let me screw this one at the transmission, and then it should all come out as one piece. And there you go. Don't drop it. Of course, you'll tear up the uh, cap possibly, but definitely probably gonna wind up tearing up your O2 if you drop it. There's our second one. Everything looks good. That's what it takes to get the exhaust off of the XK8. The only thing we got left of the exhaust is the manifolds. As you can see, those are up in there pretty good. You could get to them, I believe, right there in the car. They'd probably be a bit of a bear to get out. I wanted to point out, whenever you do set your cats away from, out to the side, especially if you're doing what I've done where you've left the O2 in. Be sure and put them somewhere where that O2 will not get damaged. Once upon a time I pulled one out like this and set it on the ground and apparently it got bumped and the connector was no longer sitting on top of the catalytic converter and it got stepped on and crushed. Finding those little ends is pretty darn hard if not impossible. And something else I noticed, this was on the passenger side, you can see where I don't think it's a mouse chew. It looks more like it was chafing against something. So I want to make sure whenever I put this back in that I make sure that wire is one, uh, resealed, and also make sure that it's not rubbing on whatever it looks like it was rubbing on before. I believe there's a heat shield up there that kind of had an edge that was kicked out. I think it was rubbing against that. And that's a perfectly good O2 sensor. I hate to see it going ruined for shorting out some wires.